Hello, everyone. I'm Hannah Bloom, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And on behalf of our research team, I would like to discuss to you today the results of an experimental study on residual stresses of dual phase high strength cold form steel angles. A little bit of background information. AHSS refers to advanced high strength steel. This has a unique multi-phase microstructure. So it's not just high strength, but it has a unique microstructure. This is currently used in the automotive industry. We would like to use members formed from AHSS in the construction industry. To do so, we need to quantify the residual stresses in the form section. This chart here shows available steel specimens for elongation versus tensile strength. See, conventional steels are here in green, high elongation, but lower strength. Our specimen is shown here in purple. We are testing a DP580. You can see it's one of the second generation AHSS materials. In the gray here, we have our third generation. You see overall higher tensile strength, but also lower elongation. Let's go over some previous studies on residual stresses in cold form steel press break members. There have been several tests on different steels of strengths and thicknesses over the years, and the measured residual stresses vary from study to study. We have seen the highest residual stresses in the corners, in some cases up to 60% of the yield strength. Residual stresses in the flat regions vary. You might see around 30% of yield strength, or you could see between zero and 10%. Generally, rolled form specimens have substantially higher residual stresses than our press break specimens. Membrane residual stresses result from Poisson stretching due to the cold forming process, and they are relatively low. The maximum is around 3% of yield strength. The flexural or bending residual stresses vary along the cross section, and the maximum is around 7.6% of yield strength. If you look at the figure up here, this is from previous study, and this shows the average bending residual stress as a percent of FY, showing we see about 33% in the corner and 8 and 17 on the flats. This diagram here shows bending flexural residual stresses and membrane and how they combine to get the outer surface and inner surface residual stresses. We want to know what are the residual stress magnitudes and distribution for advanced high strength steel for our cold form steel angles. We have a 1.8 millimeter thick dual phase steel sheet, DP580. What we did was we cut from that sheet, shown here in the green, and we press breaked it into an equal angle. We press breaked it in our sheet metal shop on campus. We had, we designed it for a corner radius of 7 64th inch, which comes to 2.8, 2.78 millimeters. The length of this is 27 inches or 686 millimeters. We then cut this into nine individual pieces, three inches or 76.2 millimeters in size. The member was cut into these nine pieces using a drop saw. We then measured the residual stresses on an edge piece, number one, and a center piece, number four. We also cut coupons from the steel sheet, and we use that to measure material properties from the static curve of a tensile coupon test. And we found that the 0.2% offset is 634 megapascals in the longitudinal direction. We installed strain gauges on our specimen. The measuring area is five millimeters by one and a half millimeters on both sides, inner and outer of the member. The strain gauges are placed symmetric from the corner and they are cut anti-clockwise. You can see from the diagram on the right, the green, these are the cut lines. So we had one, two, three, four, and five cut lines. And you can see these black bars here represent our strain gauges at the various locations on both inner and outer surfaces. To protect our strain gauges during sectioning, we used an M-coat-A polyurethane protective coating on the strain gauge and capped on polyamide tape for the wires 
What we want is to measure the residual stresses at outer inner surfaces and use this to calculate membrane and flexural residual stresses. We use the sectioning method, and you can see the specimen here. We use the vertical band saw to cut into sections. And note, you must be very careful with your fingers not to get them cut. So to do this here, you see this is our steel angle. This is our blade that's cutting it up. We have some coolant spray if it gets too hot. We have a wood stick and a vise to hold it into place for cutting. Here's an example of what our strain versus time looks like at location one, location one up here. And this was done for both our edge and center piece. So for specimen one here, that refers to cut 11 and cut 12. So the cuts on the both sides of location one and refers to strain gauge 21 and 26 for specimen one and 31 and 36 for specimen four. This shows the released strain after sectioning. So you can see here this dashed line is where we start the cut. And this is where we finish the cut. And then for cut 12, start and finish. You can see there's a lot of movement. So the readings change significantly when we're making adjacent cuts. We need to wait for it to stabilize. You can see after the cut, it does stabilize and reaches a plateau. Same for cut 16 and 17. We now have the information for the inner and outer surfaces at this location. You can see that the inner surface here is positive. That indicates that the inner surface expanded after the residual stresses were released. The outer surface here is negative, which indicates that the outer surface contracted after the residual stresses were released. This here is for location three down in the corner. And this was for both the center and edge piece. So for specimen one, we had cut 13 and 14. So cut 13 and 14 before and after the location. And this is for strain gauge 23 and 28. And for specimen four, we use cut 18 and 19 before and after for strain gauges 33 and 38. And you can see here again, they reach their plateaus when we have finished. Now this one, you can especially notice that there's obvious differences between the inner and outer surfaces. This here is the zero line. You can see the inner is much closer to zero than the outer line. This indicates a large membrane residual stress. This is larger of a difference than for position one on the previous slide, although that did also show a significant difference. Okay, so now we've collected released strains from our sectioning process. What we need to do now is convert it to residual stress. So keep in mind, if we measure positive residual strain after the sectioning process, that corresponds to a compressive residual stress resulting from the forming process. And if we measured negative residual strain after the sectioning process, that corresponds to a tensile residual stress from the forming process. So this means that residual stress is tensile at the outer surface and compression at the inner surface. To calculate the stress, we multiply strain by the value of Young's modulus we determined from our coupon test. So here you can see our distribution of residual stresses. You can see that we have a much larger value at the corners compared to the flat regions. And you can see again, tension at the outer surface and compression on the inner surface. And these distributions are pretty similar between both specimen, the edge and the center. We can now use this data to calculate the membrane and flexural residual stresses. So we take our data and we wanna get this distribution here where we get our bending and membrane components. So we divide up our measured residual stresses to the bending and membrane components, and they are shown here. Membrane is shown in red, and the sign for membrane indicates tension positive or compression negative. Flexural stresses vary through the thickness, with compression at the interior and tension on the exterior. For convenience, these are shown as 
positive. So this here are our values for membrane and flexural for the outer specimen and the center specimen. You can see as well that we have the largest values at the corners. This plot here shows the flexural membrane residual stresses percent of yield strength. We want to know what they are relative to our yield strength. We can see overall that they are much lower in yield strength compared to conventional cold form steel. So look at the diagram on the right, and this was from a previous study on conventional cold form steel. We were seeing 33 in the corner, 17, eight on the flats. Here we see, uh, for compared bending, we see about eight in the corner and perhaps two to four in the flats. So we do see a much lower percent residual stresses of the yield strength compared to previous studies on conventional steel. So some conclusions, the residual stresses on the inner surface are in compression and on the outer surface in tension. And this agrees with previous studies. Membrane residual stresses are small, consider 0. 0.4 to 6.9% of yield strength. And the maximum is at the corner. And this is much higher than the flat regions. The flexural residual stresses are 2.7 to 8.1% of the yield strength. Flexural residual stresses are larger than the membrane residual stresses. Overall, agree this is agreement with previous studies, but a smaller percent relative to the yield strength. We have some future work planned, including more samples, adding in two additional corner radii, and also looking at lift angle sections. If there's any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.